make sure I got the right date. Well, here we are at the March 24th Planning Commission. 20th. Oh. Wait a minute. Hold it here. Let's start it over again. Ah, there we are. Okay, we'll get the March 20th Planning Commission off the ground. If we could have cell phones turned off, that would be appreciated. And if you have a, something you would like to say, this young lady. Commissioner Higginson. Here. Commissioner Snodgrass. Here. And Commissioner Vick. Here. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have any speakers for? No public agenda? comments for items that are not on the agenda. Okay. With that, I think we can just move into our first item. Huh? Last minutes. Oh, we didn't do the minutes. I'm jumping over here. Okay, let's, we need approval of the minutes of February 21st. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. You got a set motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any? I abstain because I was absent. I got one abstain then. At the last planning commission meeting? No, you were here. February 21st. Oh, the real one, not the special one. Hmm? The real one, not the special one. The oh, special okay. one was sorry. The ABA. Shouldn't we have the minutes from this one We don't have those ready. We've been drafting them up, but we didn't have them in time for this, okay. this meeting. Oh, I see. Okay. He wasn't here. Well, I'll make the motion to approve those, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is proven we go on. Okay, so we got the motion approved. Okay. Um, will you want to do the disclosure first? No, so we're going to go into discussion items. Item number two, which is the presentation of resolution 2023-46. And our city clerk, uh, Anna Sauceda, will provide that uh -oh. presentation for everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. I don't believe I've met every single one of you, but my name is Anna Sauceda. I'm the Director of General Services and City Clerk here in the city of Ukaipa. And I have a very, very brief presentation for you tonight. Uh, we'll be going over resolution number 2023-46. This is a resolution that was adopted by the city council in November of last year. And this is for, uh, excuse me, it's adopting the general rules and procedures for the conduct of commissions and committees. I believe the resolution was included as part of your packet and it should have also been emailed to you um, back in November when it was adopted. And so really tonight, I'm just here to ensure um, or to see if the, the commissioners have any questions, if you have any concerns, just to take some feedback and um, just, again, make myself available for any questions that you have in regards to this resolution. And that's it. That's, that was it. That, that's really all I have. Well, you have to stay for the entire meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, does that mean for me going to give us a presentation too? And not unless you're asking me to, but no, I'm here to <laughs> cover the public works and engineering related questions uh, as they come up for the items on the agenda. Okay. With that, we just go right into our first item. Do we do we have any questions? Oh, oh, oh you Do we want... have any questions on the resolution or any, any I didn't comments see any. any feedback? No, no questions, I guess. Okay, all right. Um, that went out. You have, you have copies of the resolution. Um, if any questions do come up, any concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. You can email me, you can call me, text me. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we can move to the public hearings and um, probably with our uh, process, if you guys have any ex parte disclosures for any of the items, please, um, we can go do that real quick and then we'll move into the actual public hearings. None for me. None for me. None. 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 All right. Okay. So the first one would be case number 23135. It is a special um, use permit and I guess Who's going to take it? Mr. Yep, we'll open up the public hearing and Christian will do the presentation. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairman and Planning Commissioners. Today, 
we have item number three, uh, case number 23-135, a special use permit with architectural review for a 1,300 square foot and approximately 18 foot tall metal garage located behind an existing single family residence located at 10361 Fremont Street. Uh, that location is a 0.88 acre parcel and includes, um, is an interior lot northeast of Fremont and uh, County Ridge Road. Um, it is located within our RL1 land use district uh, within the custom home overlay. Um, it is located to the back of the, the parcel. It is um, a, a relatively quiet street. It doesn't continue far past this property and it is surrounded by other uh, single family residences. Uh, the site plan includes a 4,295 square foot single uh, story uh, single family residence and is uh, including a proposed 1,300 square foot and 17 foot eight inch tall detached metal garage. Um, it meets all of the required minimum setback requirements for the RL1 and custom home overlay and actually um, it, is in, it surpasses those minimum uh, setback requirements. The ingress and egress will be along Fremont Street, along the existing driveway. The garage includes a gabled roof uh, with horizontal ribbed steel panels, two roll-up doors on the north and south elevations, um, approximately an 18-foot peak height, and will be painted to match the existing residence. Uh, it's a little bit tough to see. It's kind of washed out there, but it also includes windows along the side elevations that do not include the roll-up doors to kind of add a little bit more of that, uh, that single-family residential feel. It also includes um, six-inch overhangs along either side to provide a little bit more intrigue and depth. The applicant uh, did drive out to his site, has a beautiful home, so you know he's going to do this well. Um, site photos here. Uh, property uh, notices were sent to all surrounding property owners and no comments were received and therefore it is staff's recommendation that you approve, uh, that you review the architectural design of the metal RV garage and if acceptable approve the design subject to the conditions of approval, adopt the special use permit findings, uh, adopt a categorical exemption, um, so, uh, class 3 and class 32 and direct staff to file a notice of exemption. The applicant is also here. Um, if you guys have any questions of him or if you'd like to say anything, otherwise staff is here if you guys have any questions as well. With that, did the uh, applicant wish to make a? Mm -hmm. Oh, would you like to come up and uh, say something? You can put around it. Uh, well, I've already asked, I've got a wall that goes, that's on the east side of this thing. Uh, so there's a, it shortened the hill. I have a hill that goes all the way across the back. There'll be concrete on both sides, but up until that point, there's a pool. There's a little playground for my grandchildren, lawn on both sides, trees. In fact, once that thing, you know, nobody's gonna see it from the street because there's <laughs> the, the angle of the, of the house itself and the trees on the other side. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? I'm just a little bit jealous of the whole thing. <laughs> no, I want a big RV garage. I think it's beautiful. It's not bad. Not bad. <laughs> this is the only thing that's triggering this is the metal construction. So it's both the metal construction and, and the also the, uh, the size of it as well. It's 1,300 square feet, which just over our 1,200 square foot threshold for right. a special use permit review. <clears throat> yeah, no question. I'm good. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. With and we that, do not have any public comment slips for this item. Thank you. With that, commissioners, we close the public hearing and we'll move to all these handsome and good looking commissioners. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and second. Any questions? Not seeing all those in favor? Aye. 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 Got seven. <clears throat> Thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. You got, you, got, you got a project. Thank you. Invite us to the grand opening. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh.
What do we got now? Trouble. Okay. Uh, the next agenda on the agenda is case number 23-151, a special use permit for architectural review of an existing unpermitted 15-foot tall, 612-square-foot RV garage. Yeah, so uh, we can open up the public hearing, and Katie Syme is our uh, development services technician. She's one of our newer employees to City Hall, and this will be our first presentation, mm -hmm. but um, she'll lead it off for, for tonight. Oh, thank you, Ben, and Honorable Chairman and Planning Commissioners. Today I bring before you item number four, case number 23-151 for a special use permit for the architectural review of an existing unpermitted 15 foot tall and 612 square foot steel RV carport on a single residential property located at 37507 Canyon Hills Drive. And uh, the site location is on a 0.49 acre parcel on a corner lot southeast of Canyon Hills Drive and Mesa Soul Drive. It is zoned as single residential within our custom home overlay and surrounded by single family residences. So there's an existing 3,230 square foot house and three car garage with an ingress and egress through Canyon Hills Drive. The special use permit is for the existing 15 foot tall and 612 square foot steel RV carport. It is currently placed alongside the single family residence, um, but the applicant is proposing to move the structure 12 foot east from the residence. So it would still meet our minimum setback requirements at 10 feet. And um, the new location would be over 50 feet from the property line, uh, approximately 60 feet from the street. So the location and appearance of the steel RV carport would be minimized due to the downward slope from the rear of the property to the front of the property, and we'll see that in the um, later photos. So the steel RV carport will feature a gable roof and will be open on all four sides. You'll see in later sides the photos of the structure, which include an extended gable roof and screening on the rear and side walls. Uh, the screening will be removed per the conditions of approval. The structure is sized at 13 feet vertical clearance, but pitches at the center with a peak height of 15 feet. The extended gable roof consists of four screen horizontal ribbed steel panels, and uh, we'll see this in the photos later. Um, it's not shown on this elevation. It, um, the four screen horizontal ribbed steel panels will also be painted to match the existing single family residence for design compatibility. And um, let's look at these site photos. So um, this is the perspective from the street. And uh, this is the existing structure. Again, to reiterate, the new location will be a little bit farther to the left if you're looking at the bottom right photo. As a part of the project notice, um, project notice was sent out to the surrounding property owners and no comments were received. Therefore, uh, it is staff's recommendation that you A, review the architectural design uh, of the structure and adopt the special use permit findings and direct staff to adopt a categorical exemption pursuant to CEQA and direct staff to file a notice of exemption. And uh, the applicant is here if you have any questions for him or staff, and it is my understanding that the applicant will also want to present on this project. Okay, would the applicant like to come forth? I 
actually you have just some... give us your name and address. Oh, for Larry record, Lee, three seven five zero seven Canyon Hills Drive here in Ukaipa. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. I have some updated. Oh, oh. did they say that? Or I missed that. No, I missed it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I too, like the gentleman before me, take really high pride in my property. And, uh, you know, I make sure that I'm not a menace or have any sore spots on my um, property. I'm very prideful of that. Um, but I was hoping you guys would have a little leniency regarding the painting of this um, cover. As you could see, there's only one visible side to this cover, and it's facing my neighbor. And a lot of thought went into uh, choosing the color green um, because I didn't want the neighbor, prior to the cover being put there, all they could see is my upper second story floor and look into our bathroom. Mm -hmm. So both of us had our blinds closed all the time for privacy's sake. So I don't know if you could see in these pictures, but along my wall and, and adjacent to the neighbor property, my uh, wall is um, filled with trees. up here on the left. So when they look, you know, the photo on the right, the only part that is actually seen is those three uh, ribbed sections at the top. Because everything below that, the, the hill and the wall is blocking. So anyway, I'm hoping you guys would, uh, would accept the color green and all the Ukaipa street signs are green, and <laughs> the city signs are green, and all the trees are green, but uh, that, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I see if I have any questions for him. Um, any of you have? Okay. Let's, uh, any, no public comments? No public no, comments. Nothing. Okay, so with that, we'll just close the public hearing and move to the commissioners. Let me say. Start down there. So as far as the color, and, and, and I concur with the applicant, I, I think it does lend itself to be a less of a visual in, in consideration of the neighbor. So I applaud the applicant to even take those steps. I live in that neighborhood too, so it's a very wooded area. It's very tree oriented and very obviously neighborhood friendly. So I would support if there is some exception to that to leave the color as green as the applicant requested. I agree with Commissioner Higginson. I'm, I'm okay with the green, it makes perfect sense. And I would even make a motion for a provision to keep it the green color for the applicant. Yeah, so in that case, um, the motion would include uh, removal of condition number 13 okay. um, from the conditions and then modification. Um, issues with stuff like this, because we, we usually stick to a pretty stern schedule of painting the auxiliary buildings to match. and. Uh, as long as it doesn't interrupt that, I'm on board too. I just. <clears throat> I think as part of the modification to finding number two, um, if there's some language that the commission would like to see kind of where kind of narrows the the okay. door, so to speak, for, for other applications where it's like, hey, it's not carte blanche to just have kind of mismatched colors, but based on the setting and other kind of components for this property that would probably be prudent just to make sure that it's much more tailored to this particular instance rather than any other project. Yeah, that's, that'd be my only concern is the unique argument here makes sense with the visibility, but I don't wanna open the door to future issues in this, so I'm not sure how to word it, but I'm sure you can help me out. Yeah. I think when we talk about that, we talk about complementary and, and uh, the term complementary to the residents so I don't, just think, don't see this being not, you know, complementary to the residents. So I think, as Commissioner Vick would say, you know, we don't want to set a precedence, but I think from an exception standpoint, it is still being complementary to that. It also complements, I think, the neighborhood. It complements and 
creates sensitivity to the neighbor. And perhaps um, as a suggestion for that is the color is kind of complimentary. It does look like kind of the 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 end cap for the method, some of the landscaping along the sides of the evergreen um, landscaping, the integration of that creates the compatibility and we can uh, make sure that that is reflected in the bindings. Okay, thank you. Stacy, you have anything? Richard? Mr. Hicks? I'll make a motion that we approve uh, case 23-151, remove condition 13, and for two, what was it, Ben, we need to do? So it'd be modifying, I guess, in this case, um, the structure, identifying the compatibility of that structure um, or the edge of the property, the, the front face of it, it does have a color that matches. And then the green word is um, elevated is adjacent to an evergreen screen. And so because of those different components, it's got the whole motion. There? So, so remove condition 13 and then on number two, we'll, uh, we'll accept the uh, complementary color to match the landscaping. I'll support that. Second. We have it. Okay, a motion is second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I hear no nays. Motion carries. You got a project, sir. Good luck. <laughs> it's already done. <laughs> Project's done. And that is case number 23-151, a special use permit oh, for uh, We're going to be on the next item. Item number five, which is case number 24-001. Oh, we're at number five. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about like that. He led me wrong. <laughs> okay. We, on this one, we have uh, case number 24 that zero zero, whatever planning use permit and architectural <laughs> review for the construct. Whoa, I'm back. Uh, thank you, honorable uh, planning commissioners and chairman. Today, I bring before you case number 24 zero one, a planning use permit with architectural review for the construction of a proposed 2,899 square foot Raisin Cane's restaurant with a 1,360 square foot outdoor patio area an associated parking lot, site landscaping and signage that includes a minor variance request for an additional wall-mounted sign located at the southeast corner of 12th Street and Ukaipa Boulevard. Uh, some of you may have been here. You might remember there was a previous entitlement at this location, um, which included a car wash, gas station, and a uh, convenience store. That entitlement is still active as um, but the, the applicant is moving forward with a, a separate entitlement proposal. Um, there had been previous requests for entitlement there as well that included a variety of tenants. And so we'll continue with the proposed project. Uh, it includes a 1.89 acre site that is on the southeast side of the intersection of Ukepa Boulevard and 12th Street. Uh, the land use district is within our general commercial or our CG land use district and is surrounded by uh, similar development to the east and west, uh, that being commercial development, um, with residential, multiple residential to the south, uh, some multiple residential non-conforming to the um, west, and then Uca the Ukepa High School to the north of that site. The site is currently vacant, but was previously developed and has since been demoed. Um, the proposal does include a site plan that has a 2,899 square foot interior space, as well as a 1,359 square foot outdoor dining area. That also includes a, um, a driveway cover for their, their tenants that would be out there. Um, it also has access from Ukepa Boulevard as well as 12th Street, and the existing street improvements have already been uh, in place, including the curb, commercial drive approaches, and sidewalk. Um, there are 49 spaces provided with this project in excess of the 38 that are required, including two uh, ADA spaces and two uh, EV spaces with an additional eight EV spaces that are uh, convertible to EV in the future, uh, electric charging. It does include a block wall along the adjacent uses uh, to the south and to the east. Uh, notably, to the south, there is additional landscaping provided between uh, the Raisin Canes as well as the residential use. These are the provided elevations. Um, it does include a modern industrial design 
featuring a mix of materials and accent details to provide some visual intrigue. Uh, the, the elevations include uh, brick veneer, galvanized steel, wood facade, and glass, as well as some of the applicants provided art uh, featuring Kane the dog, who is the kind of mascot of Raising Canes. Uh, the elevations, uh, uh, the proposed restaurant includes that 2,899 square feet of interior area and features a 23, uh, roughly 23 and a half foot peak height. Um, the building also includes a large outdoor eating space with a wraparound patio cover and fencing to designate that space as well as stamped concrete uh, and perimeter plantings to that to kind of designate that outdoor space and create its own area, which I think is a benefit considering the proximity to the Kaipa High School. Um, we'll go to the remaining elevations there. Um, the restaurant also includes, as you can see here, Architectural elements along all three sides, all sides of the building to maintain 360 degrees of architectural detail as required by the City of Ukaipa's design guidelines for commercial projects. Um, the landscaping that's provided does have an emphasis on the perimeter screening, um, particularly along the driveway, or the, excuse me, the, the drive-through. Um, again, with emphasis on the uh, residential uses to the south and then those minor, uh, the non-conforming residential uses to the uh, west as well. The applicant additionally requests a uh, minor variance for an additional wall-mounted sign. Uh, as, with, with the two frontages that this has along 12th Street in Ukaipa, it has additional view from right-of-ways uh, requiring kind of additional advertising space. This is um, something that has been provided with previous tenants along Ukaipa Boulevard uh, and in the surrounding area, including the Taco Bell, the 7-Eleven, the KFC, the Fast Five Car Wash, with, as well as many tenants within the Ukaipa Point site, the McDonald's site, and the Starbucks site. Uh, it was just a quick drive by, but there are several that um, this has been looked at and, and reviewed for given that corner lot uh, condition. In addition, uh, the monument signage has been provided uh, as required for review by Planning Commission. It is proposed to be eight foot long by four feet tall for a total sign area of 32 square feet on a two foot base uh, that includes brick facade as well as an aluminum cap to tie in with the materials used by that primary building. The applicant did opt to go with the monument signage as opposed to the pylon signage. Um, because of the high visibility along Ucapa Boulevard, they wanted to have something that was a little bit more pedestrian friendly. So I did want to note that. Through the review of this project, uh, kind of following the, the packets that were presented to uh, the planning commissioners, there was an additional condition that um, may be beneficial, particularly for a very popular use such as Raising Canes. Uh, it's shown above, it'd be condition of approval number 94, which includes a requirement to provide a temporary traffic control plan um, during the two weeks of the kind of grand opening uh, for this site to be reviewed by the city staff. Uh, this has been provided to the applicant as well. They, they did see this prior to the meeting um, and they didn't mention to me before the meeting any concerns with it, so I did wanna highlight that as well. Um, but if you guys want to take a second to look at condition 94, as it's not in your packets, uh, it reads, uh, prior to the occupancy of the conditional use permit, the applicant shall create a traffic control plan to address traffic impacts during the grand opening, ribbon cutting, or any similar such events, which will stay in place for the first two weeks of operation unless otherwise provided by the city engineer or designee. Such supplemental short-term high impact traffic plan shall be approved by the city traffic engineer prior to the applicant opening their business to the public. I did wanna add that the, the applicant did do a queuing study as well as a traffic study for uh, the, the use at this site and that did indicate that they had adequate stacking for the daily operations when compared to similar raising canes in the Southern California area. It was actually far in excess of, of what the highest peak demand they saw in, in surrounding areas was, I believe it was uh, typical, the, the highest that they saw was a 23 uh, car long queue and this site can accommodate up to 35. Through the environmental review of this project, um, 
this, this project would qualify for a class 32 uh, categorical exemption as it is in field development on a site less than five acres. Further, it would qualify as a class uh, three categorical exemption because it constitutes the construction of less than 10,000 square feet. And lastly, we, we would include the class five exemption as the variance would result in a minor land use modification uh, associated with the signage. The project review um, included noticing to all surrounding property owners. Um, one response was received by the Ukaipa Calamesa Joint Unified School District, indicating and acknowledging the traffic that occurs during peak hours uh, that was included with the packets that you guys received. Here are some of the existing photos of the site. There is that partially constructed uh, perimeter wall. And here's a view from 12th Street. So the recommendation for uh, the, the uh, Planning Commission is on the screen and should be modified to include that uh, condition 94, if appropriate. Um, but I, I'm here if you guys have any questions. I, I believe that the uh, Kimberly Horn team who worked on the, as the representative for this project, a representative from Keynes, I think the property owner is also here. So if you guys have any questions. My name is Bruce Dickinson, 606 North Larchmont Boulevard. I've uh, owned this property for a long, long time since uh, the Valley Inn Bar was there. I don't know if any of you remember that Raising Canes is not going to be doing any of that. Uh, I have talked to Callie Binks, the superintendent of the school district, and she was uh, very happy about uh, this use, uh, was a fan of the food and the fast food as well as uh, the staff. Um, and. Uh, so I think um, I think it's a win-win for the city uh, with uh, from what the prior use was, and it is a uh, like the prior approval. This is with a single-use tenant on the entire site, uh, and with a national tenant, not a franchisee. And so uh, uh, you have just this national tenant to be dealing with as far as any issues that may come up with them. And I believe they're going to be very responsible uh, tenants with uh, the proximity that it has with the school district, uh, the high school across the street. So I'll turn that over to them. And if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, uh, any commissioners have questions? Or gentlemen? No. Thank, Thank you. you. I think we'll let the, the applicant's team continue. Oh, okay. Go ahead, sir. Hello, my name's Ryan Smith. I'm uh, with Raising Cane's property development team. We're really excited to be joining the community, and it sounds like some people may not be familiar with Cane, so I'll give a cut to create the best chicken fingers on the planet and the best customer experience you could possibly do. However, when he got out of school, no banks would loan him the money, so he moved to Alaska and raised all the money himself fishing for sockeye salmon, which leads me to the name. He originally was thinking it would be sockeye chicken fingers, and his business partner thought that didn't sound very good. So he looked at his golden lab, his golden lab and decided that the name of his um, And as Bruce mentioned, we do pride ourselves in being a good part of the community, taking care of the property, and really engaging with the community too, with fundraisers, um, uh, raising money, donating, things like that, and, and creating jobs in the local community as well. So um, I have, we have our whole design team here with us. If there's any questions or technical nature of the project. I do, and that's the, the traffic. Because okay. as you pointed out, that currently is a drop off spot. Whether it's supposed to be or not, it's because it's, it's there. Right. So is the company, what have you done to prepare for uh, the traffic at the peak hours, the number of students that will be coming in at certain times of the day? Are they allowed off campus right now for lunch? No? Okay. So okay. before or after school, you'll have, you know, kids loitering around for who knows how long. Right. 
um, and there's always mischief afoot. So are you prepared for, for that? Yeah, uh, I will say that we're very familiar with having canes located near schools, and we actually encourage it and want it to be a place for, for kids to come after school and, and hang out and enjoy, enjoy the meals. Um, but in, in relation to traffic, we did, do, we did submit a queuing study, and I can let Kimley Horn come up and speak to that in more detail. So one thing I will note as well, the uh, opening time for Raising Canes is after the drop-off hour for the Kepa High School, and then the peak hour for lunch is typically prior to the pickup hour. So just a quick note. Yes. Good. So they'll probably still use your parking lot for a drop <laughs> pickup. They will. So you're not going to be serving breakfast or anything? We don't do breakfast hmm. at this time. No. Okay. Any other commissioners? I just think that the ingress and egress are really well thought out mm -hmm. because it's on both sides. You have a really nice cycle going in and out. They created more parking spaces than they need to. So I do think you guys did a really great job of wing, wing. Uh, Obviously, we don't want to create another in and out queuing nightmare. That's why I don't go to in and out. But um, just from the standpoint, I was looking at the other um, comparisons and, and whether I need to have your traffic engineer clarify that or not. Obviously, they were looking at other uh, queuing aspects of other raising canes. Uh, I mm -hmm. think that were part of larger shopping developments. Um, this particular location, I think, will do it very well. I think the one, there's one in Redlands, isn't there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it does very well. And yeah, so it's always busy. I think it's a quality project. I think it's a quality company. So just the fact that you're providing more queuing uh, makes me more comfortable about that. So I think you did a good job on that. Thank you. And, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, just to just provide some additional details related to the traffic. Uh, prior to uh, the site uh, design being finalized and in the, through the process, we did work with the applicant's uh, traffic engineer to, to establish a scoping agreement which identified the various components or aspects of the traffic engineering traffic study that was going to be uh, uh, included in the study. And in that scoping agreement, we did ask them to identify the fact that there was a school. And um, as uh, uh, Mr. Farmer mentioned, uh, you know, the, the, the business is planned to open uh, before noon. The peak morning school traffic hours is in the morning, you know, between 7.15 and 9 o'clock, I would say. And uh, the peak traffic uh, uh, hours when school lets out is uh, between 2.30 and 3.30. Um, you know, there's, a, there's more of an impact to traffic related to the school in the morning than there is in the afternoon because in the morning you have all the students that are trying to get there at a certain time, but in the afternoon, um, you know, some, uh, say the dinner rush hour, according to the information they provided, doesn't start until after four o'clock, which it, again, it happens to, to miss the school peak hours. So all that information was incorporated into the traffic study and the engineering uh, division staff. We did review that. We did work with them on, on reviewing and approving the traffic study. So a lot of the, a lot of that, those components were incorporated in the study and considered and evaluated as part of the environmental review for the project. Thank you. So are they widening the street at all from where it sits now? Uh, uh, no, no. Other than the construction of the driveways, uh, there is no uh, widening required as part of the project. So would they <laughs> a complain? I guess the traffic light on that corner is really. I mean, it needs to be during the school hours when the kids are crossing. You know, they don't pay attention to the <laughs> light, and then you can't make that left turn because you only get three cars through because the kids. And when they get out of school, it's the same way. They don't, there's no control there from the school mm -hmm. to control the kids from just keep on walking. Even though lights is stopped, they just keep going. And so that's, that's a congestion and adding that to, I don't know, I just think that maybe the school district needs to step up and do something that but I, but I think as Furman was, um, Furman, sorry, I think as he was stating that it fluctuates in the afternoon because of the variances of classes and some people get at fifth, some people walk home because their parents are dropping them off versus driving. So I think it's a little bit better in the afternoon. You don't even have that problem in the morning because they're not open. 
think right. JR is wor worried about the pedestrian traffic that doesn't ab abide to traffic laws and regulations. They don't. It's a, uh, and it's whether it be a school district problem to employ right. some kind of traffic safety officer that maybe hangs out there mm -hmm. um, just because of the increase of a thousand cars. I mean, I don't know what our peak hour totals are, but it's 30 to 40, right? I can have uh, Trevor come up and speak to it. <laughs> Yeah, it, that is something that we that we have been working on with the school district and the Utah Police Department. Uh, uh, just as recent as three weeks ago, um, staff from the the city and the police department uh, and school district staff visited the site in the morning to look at to essentially evaluate the timing and the phasing of that traffic signal. The school district and the um, the high school district staff are working. On a on an improved what they're calling an improved circulation and drop off plan internally that will incorporate the secondary access off of 13th Street and then also using the access to where the um, uh, the the old Sizz next to the old Sizzler <laughs> and uh, so we are we did uh, recognize and that was based on what uh, for uh, yes so okay. okay. That's the dark shaded area, I'm guessing, to the yeah. uh, west of the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might be getting a little out. I got Kimley Horn here, but yes, right, it's right going to be here. subterranean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not shown on that plan. That one, yeah. So we're subterranean, all all of that instead of mm -hmm. above ground. Okay. Yeah, I know there was some discussion with Circle K two on 12th Street for a turning lane, but. I think that was part of the traffic study that it's not really necessary. And this thing's going to be, you're going to have to figure it out in the, in the afternoons because everyone's going to be pulling through there to pick up their kids that are over getting chicken. So it's a, <laughs> it's a terrible problem to have. That's true. <laughs> Meet me in the drive thru. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can run a student pickup in the drive thru. Yeah, so. right. Well, <laughs> yeah, I will point out that as it gets busy, we have a program that staff will come out, take orders on iPads, sure. also run the food out. Yeah. So I think it'll, and help yeah. direct traffic. No, so. I just mean the kids uh, that cross the street and get picked up in that lot now. So, yeah. but it. that's just something that's going to be fluid. You're going to have to figure it out as you go on. But. Right. Fact, anyway. might walk in. You might walk a little quicker to get chicken. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe so they'll get there in that through the intersection <laughs> faster. And I do like that they have the two lanes like some of the other uh, establishments yeah. have. So that also helps with Absolutely. traffic flow. Mm -hmm. So you're not being congested kind of like at in and out You know, it's really congested over there. But so I think this is a really great design, too. Yeah, they're, they're doing something pretty neat with the lanes. Actually, there's a third lane as well. It's mm -hmm. a bailout lane. So if you... Change get in mind. line and you don't just want kidding. to actually buy you just, right. yeah. you don't want chicken but yeah, yeah they also allow for the two lanes rather than merging they have the two lanes fully operational as a pickup for, right. for both so we'll have runners running food out yeah oh got it yes they will run out run the food out yes yeah, yeah. Okay. at that canopy location where the pickup window is yeah hmm. never seen one before I mean, it makes sense as far as mm -hmm. you have a 35 car volume in the drive thru. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's so we cool. got to keep people moving. So, yeah. yeah. And one thing to kind of note the 35 car volume is kind of within the drive thru. And mm -hmm. so, if let's say hypothetically it gets even more backed up, there's still a lot more space before you even get to mm -hmm. you type of boulevard. And so, yeah. Um, well, 35 is a huge stack. Yeah, I mean, this is a big one, not atypical. So yeah. I think part of the concern, especially comes from in and out is the northern traffic on 12 turning right in and then backing up. So as long as they can get into the drive through and off of 12 kind yeah, of remedies that problem. Truck turn analysis and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So is this drive through stack probably equivalent to what is in uh, Beaumont banning? Is that Beaumont? It's I'm spanning. not super familiar with Beaumont's what that. a lot smaller. It's a, it's in that little complex over there. It's a smaller footprint. Mm -hmm. No, but I mean the, uh, the stack. stack. Oh, is yeah. Similar. They, I think they do. Dump. I'm not familiar with that one, but I would say all the ones I work on, this is one of the largest ones I've seen. Okay. Yeah. 35 yeah. is a lot of cars. Yeah. 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 And then the parking lot, of course, like you said, Ben. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They sell a lot of chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's okay, any, uh, anyone else have a question for um, the applicant? No. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank We're you. looking forward to it. Do you have any comments, Ben? When Pat Fee Program was established, 
in that sale where there's no increase of fees that would be required. And so because of that, they received that credit for what had been demolished okay. before. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyone else have any? Make a motion to approve. Okay. I second. I have a second. You do down here. Oh, well, and, well, and well, just well. To, okay. just to confirm, does that include? Oh the, yeah, with the COA. The the condition number ninety four added. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we do have the wine country specific plan going to um, city council a special meeting on Wednesday next week, um, and then at. Monday's city council meeting, we will have our general plan uh, annual progress report and housing element progress report. And so it shows all the projects that we collectively, both including you guys as a board that reviews individual projects, as well as staff on the efforts that we've been undertaking and what we've accomplished for the 2023 um, calendar year. And so um, certainly um, encourage everyone to check it out, um, but that will be presented to the city council on, on Monday. So. And other than that, um, that's all I have. And so the uh, the wine, um, when does that come up? You said that was? It will be uh, next week. So it will be Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, March 27th at 5 o'clock at the YPAC. Okay. Wow. I'm not expecting a lot of people? <laughs> Just a handful. The special meetings at okay. the YPAC? Yeah. Real city home. They, they did look at different... Um, options for that driveway but with having a center median that you cut boulevard yeah and the speeds on you cut boulevard that does cause limitations no i was talking the one on 12th on 12th oh. if you move that curb return one lane you know south and you had two lanes in so you can make a right turn and a left turn in there and get into that drive through lane i was just curious if that was ever anything ever considered like that it's kind of unique so I'll when you have a unique drive approach like that too, sometimes you have people that are unfamiliar with, with how it may work, and so you get people going out. Running into each other. Go, yep. <laughs> yep. Chicken overload. They're going to play chicken. <laughs> okay. I could have helped myself. Uh, I could. I'd just like They're playing to, uh, chicken for chicken? <laughs> uh, our, acknowledge your new planner. Yes, you did Good a great job. job. Thank 